Welcome, this is Jennifer, and I appreciate you stopping by. Today, I wanted to share some techniques for using gilding flakes on your cards. Gilding flakes or metal leafing is a great way to create like a vintage foil look or vintage gold or silver look to your projects. It really is beautiful in real life and almost impossible to photograph. So just wait for the video to kind of see the shine that you get. Now this product has been around for a long time. I remember using products like this when I first started stamping and I'm really glad they're making a comeback. So I'll share a few techniques with you today. Now all the stamps I'm using today, or most of them, are from a new to me stamp co company called Flora and Fauna. Here's a few of their stamp sets that I got. Now this company is, I really like their designs because they're very hand-drawn, kind of doodly feel. Very playful, yet very classy at the same time. Very classic. So you're going to see a few different examples using these, and I just can't get enough of them. I'll be using two of these stamp sets that I showed you here today. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this first card. I'm going to show you how to do those foil stripes using the gilding flakes. This is beautiful in real life. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch pink cardstock. You can use any color or kind of cardstock. And I'm going to take a piece of double sided tape and I want to do diagonal lines. So I'm going to put a piece of double sided tape down at any diagonal you want. Now I want to make the rest of the stripes be evenly spaced out from that. So what I'm going to do is rotate my paper so that I line up that double sided tape with the lines on my grid background. So now it's lined up with that and I can lay down each piece of tape around that to be evenly spaced by following the grids on my background. This is so much better than eyeballing it and I can make sure that they're evenly spaced. I think when you have a background like this with lots of stripes, if you have one kind of off, it really stands out and kind of messes with the eye. So this is a great trick to use. Now you could do this on vellum, you could do this on any paper that you want. And I really like this Be Creative double-sided tape. And it's available in a variety of thicknesses. If you don't have this, you can cup a, cut a double-sided sheet of adhesive into thin strips and add that down too. Once I have the entire front covered with these diagonal stripes, I have two options. I can either fold the ends back to the back of the card, or I can take some scissors and cut along the edge. I prefer to cut along the edge, so I'm going to use my Tim Holtz shears to do this because these are non-stick, so that adhesive will just come right off when I'm done and I don't have to worry about it building up on the shears. Okay, so now that I have these stripes down, it's time to add the gold or the gilding flakes or metal leafing. So I'm going to remove all of the release paper and all of that adhesive is exposed. Now when I use gilding flakes, I like to use them in a box so that I don't get the gilding flakes everywhere. They do like to travel, I will say that. So I am doing this in a Gina K storage box. I shared these in a recent video because I like them for storing projects. Well, they're excellent to work with gilding flakes in because I can kind of contain it all in there and close it up when I'm done. I'm using Nouveau gilding flakes for this and I took out a pinch of silver and a pinch of gold and I'm just going to dab them onto the background, mixing it up here and there. Now there are gilding flakes available in a variety of mixtures of colors, but I like to just make my own. So I have silver, gold, and copper colored gilding flakes and then I mix them as I want to. These gilding flakes never seem to end. I've used them and used them and used them. And every time I open up the jar, they kind of fluff back up and it's still full. These go a long way. Now you can see these are not for the faint of heart. They are quite messy, but I'm gonna share some tips for kind of controlling it. So I use a stencil brush to knock off all the excess once I am sure that I've covered all the exposed adhesive. And you can see how I'm capturing all of the extra metal flakes that I'm knocking off back into that little storage box. Now the storage box you can save for this purpose only, or you can kind of take it all and put it back into a jar or into a different bag. So now I'm using the stencil brush and going back and forth to knock off any of the excess. And you get this beautiful vintage looking um, metal leafing. Uh, it's hard to explain. It's like what you see in old churches. It's totally different than foiling, totally different than heat embossing. Check out that texture and shine. Now, if you really want it to shine, you can rub your fingers over it and that'll shine it some more too. Now for cleaning up, I highly recommend using a Swiffer dusting cloth. You can see it picks it all up here. 
You could also use a hand vac, which I did also, or you can use a microfiber cloth. But I really find those Swiffer dusting cloths are great for this. And look at that beautiful shine that you get. Now, if you don't have a storage box, you could always use like a lid to a container, a large container, or any other kind of box, and just clean it out when you're done. Okay, so now I wanted to get two pieces out of this one background so I could make two cards. So you can see I just cut it at a diagonal and I could do two cards in this design if I want to. But I changed my mind and decided to put them together on one card with kind of a window in the middle. Before I create the card, I need my little flowers to add to the little opening. So I have stamped some of those flora and fauna stamps with Versamark ink on white cardstock, and I'm going to gold heat emboss it with Hero Arts embossing powder. Now, if I wanted to, I could use the gilding flakes for this, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of this video. But I decided just to keep it clean and use the Hero Arts embossing powder, and it matches pretty well. So now I'm going to stamp Oh Hello with Versamark ink onto the card and heat set that with the gold embossing powder also. This Oh Hello is from the stamp that says Oh Hello Friend from one of the Flora and Fauna stamp sets, but I just cut the word friend off so that I had Oh Hello only. So now I'm putting double-sided tape on the back of my striped piece and I'm putting a piece of craft foam behind that because I want it to pop up evenly. I put the tape down and realized I needed to cut my foam down, so I'm holding it to the back to get the angle right, and now moving it to the front. Now at this point, I'm making a big mistake, and you'll see it in a moment. I decided to leave it in the video, so you can see how I kind of recovered from it. But here I'm putting adhesive on the other piece and putting the leftover piece of craft foam behind that, so that's raised up. You could use foam tape, but I find this handles the mail much better. So I'm putting a double-sided tape on the craft foam now so we can add this to my card. And this is when I realized I didn't trim that top pink piece down and it's gonna hang off the top of the card because I didn't cut any off for that area where I have oh hello. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the bottom piece down, then take this piece and hold it over my card and decide how much I need to chop, chop off the top. So I'm laying it down just for enough room to show the oh hello. And then I'm going to cut away some of the top. So I'm removing that craft foam. I do this a lot. I glue things down, take them apart, move things around. It's all part of the process. And I don't usually leave it in a video because I don't want to waste the time showing that. But trust me, it happens a lot. So there I put a little cut mark where I need to trim it. Took it to my Tim Holtz uh, trimmer. Cut a little bit off. Now I'm going to cut a little bit off of the foam piece also, and then glue it all back together. So this uh, double-sided tape that I'm using from Be Creative is super duper strong. However, because I'm using that cr the craft foam between, I was able to remove it with no problem. I do move things around quite a bit, that's for sure. Okay, so now I can glue this down to the top of the card and we have the nice little gap for the oh hello. So I wanted to keep the rest of the simple because we have so much shine in the background. So I have those simple little gold heat embossed flowers that I created. I cut them out by hand so that I cut right up against the gold embossing. And I'm adding to them, them to that little gap with a little bit of foam tape and a little bit of double-sided tape. And I decided to leave it at that, but add a few gems to it and that's it. So I'm using some of Lucy's cards, little jewels. These are rainbow jewels. There are a bunch of colors in the mix. You can buy individual color packs, but I like the mix because I can pick out any colors I may want. So I'm adding a few light pink gems to the center of the flowers and off to the side. And I felt like that kind of finished the card off. Now, once I was done with this one and you can see all that vintage looking shine in the background, I created another, the same design, same techniques, but on a mint colored cardstock. I just wanted to have a second card ready to go. So there's how you use gilding flakes with double-sided tape. Next, I wanted to show you how you can use it with stamping, and this is really fun to do. So I uh, used another Flora and Fauna stamp set. This is the Under the Sea stamp set, and I just really like these images. I took the wave and I am stamping it repeatedly onto a pool cardstock strip using Versamark ink. So you'll see that I start stamping on the bottom and I work my way up to fill most of this strip. So before I showed you gilding flakes with tape, 
Now I'm showing you it with stamping. You could also use glue pens or other adhesives too. There are many ways to use gilding flakes. And I'll try to show some more examples in future videos. So here I am going to heat emboss it with a special embossing powder called Ranger Sticky Embossing Powder. You need a sticky embossing powder to add those gilding flakes to it. Now I'm putting a lot of this on here because I really want to make sure that I get good coverage with the sticky embossing powder. You also want to make sure your heat gun is good and hot and you bring it to your paper just long enough to turn the powder to a shine. Then you want to stop so that it's ready to go and nice and sticky. So for this, I'm just going to use the silver and I'm kind of picking out bigger pieces of the gilding flakes and pressing it right onto the embossing. Now, since this is sticky, it will hold the gilding flakes just like the double-sided tape did earlier. So I'm really pressing this in with my fingers, making sure that I've covered everything. Then I'm using my stencil brush or any kind of brush to rub off the excess. Now this gives you a different type of shine than heat embossing. It has a little texture to it because of that embossing powder, but it has a really amazing shine that is just very unique. So you can stamp any image and add gilding flakes to it using a sticky embossing powder. So next I uh, stamped and colored with Copic markers a few of the images from this Under the Sea stamp set and I'm adding them right onto the background and stamping high there. Kept this very simple and then I'll add this with double sided tape onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I wanted little bubbles coming up from the fish and I wasn't sure what to do. I decided to end up using Nouveau Jewel Drops. Those are the clear drops that have a tint of color to it. The jewel type are that tint of color. So I used the one with a blue tint just to add little bubbles going up from the little fishies there. So there's another way to use those gilding flakes for really unique looking shine and texture to the background. Now I did want to show you two other cards that I made while I had my supplies out. This one that says you are so kind. I used a stamp and that sticky embossing powder and then I put a mix of silver and gold gilding flakes onto it. So you can see the stamp set that I used there in the background. It's the Oh Hello Friend from Flora and Fauna. And I put little gems on it also. Now around the outside there on the mat of it, I ran a piece of double sided tape around the four edges of the mat and then put on a mix of the gold and silver gilding flakes. You can see how it looks there so that it matches the stamping perfectly. And then I put that onto a note card made of a silver shimmer cardstock. Now the you are so is from another Flora and Fauna stamp set, but the word kind I cut from this power poppy nice things to say stamp set. I like to mix stamps together to create unique sentiments also. So there you can see the fun vintage shine that you get with the gilding flakes. Here's another example that I did. This one, I did the gilding flakes for those flowers that I showed you earlier. So I heat embossed it with the sticky powder, put the gilding flakes on, did the same for the oh hello. Then I used some Copic markers to carefully color in the color of those flowers. I also did the gilding flakes on the mat of the card too. I wasn't really thrilled with the results of these cards, so that's why I switched and filmed the cards that I showed you today. Now I did want to mention that the Simon Says Stamp metallic envelopes, which come in the V flap and the square flap, really have a nice shimmer look to it that looks nice with gilding flakes. So I thought I'd mention that. That's what I'm going to team up with these cards today. So there's just a few ideas for gilding flakes. If you're interested in learning more, I'll share some more in future videos, but also check out the online card classes Sparkle and Shine class. This is our most recent class. It just wrapped up, but you can join anytime. I shared several ideas for using gilding flakes, and here are a peek at some of the examples that I shared. Many, many ways to use them, and they are definitely addictive. So I'll provide a link to that class in case you're interested. If you are interested in the products that I use today, they are linked below in the YouTube description. Go over to my blog for more information. In the middle are some other videos you may like, and I hope you'll return again soon. Thanks for watching.